And if you guys want to yell out questions from off camera, feel free. Okay, and we're rolling. We're rolling. We're on the Magic Box Talk Show, and I have Tim Goncharo. Is, is that pronounced right? Did you I get did, it? Yeah. I, I nailed it on the first try. I'm very excited to be okay. here. Okay. <laughs> uh, Tim, you're running for city council. I am. That's crazy. Why are you doing that? That seems to be the most common <laughs> reaction. Right. Why would you, you want right? to be on the council? <laughs> My God. <laughs> well, I have a lot of answers to that, but okay. I'll, I'll try to give you a short one. Um, I've lived here a long time. I settled in Santa Cruz because there's so many things I love about this place. And among them are the people love the environment, mm -hmm. the people value diversity and creative expression. It's a community where everybody is welcome, where everybody's input is wanted. Mm -hmm. And I see those things changing. Uh, we've had some hard times. Mm -hmm. And... I see some reactions to that that are maybe natural human reactions, but I think they're taking us in directions that are not healthy. A lot of people are pointing fingers, blaming each other, mm -hmm. trying to figure out which parts of the community don't belong, how we can get rid of th those people, mm -hmm. and I, I think those are not consistent with the values of Santa Cruz, and I also don't think they're helpful. I don't think those are, are going to solve any of our problems. So, Seems like there's a lot of panic, and then people maybe not thinking clearly about the full implications of what they're doing, or just sort of adopting an ideology because it it plays into their fears, that sort of thing. Yeah, if you go to things like city council meetings, something you hear a lot is, we have to do something. And if, if somebody says, well, you know, this proposal you're making isn't really going to help the problem you're trying right. to address. But we have, say, to, do yeah, but we have to do something. <laughs> not I, I, I think we need better solutions than that. Yeah. Well, and the end result of that is you get this, this vendor ordinance where they're banning art vendors from rolling blankets out and putting them on the ground. Downtown was so unpopular, was such a huge back, public backlash against it, that they haven't even been enforcing the ordinance right. at all. They haven't been giving tickets out. So that's what happens when you have a council that's run on this mentality of, well, we have to do something, whether it's a good idea or not. Right. So how would you, if, if elected, like what sorts of things do you want to implement that would be an improvement for that? Well, I don't want to pretend that I have all the answers, but I do have some ideas. Mm -hmm. um, there's been a lot of talk recently about the city's public safety task force that came up with an enormous plan with 72 specific suggestions for things that we can do to improve things. And one that's gotten a lot of attention is that we need to lock up a lot more people. I think we need to challenge that. Mm -hmm. When we talk about potential solutions to problems like mental illness mm -hmm. or homeless veterans or homelessness in general or poverty or illness, the response we always hear is, well, we'd like to do more about that, but there's just no money. And there seems to be this assumption that locking people up is free. Right. But of course <laughs> it's not. In fact, that's the most expensive option of all. Mm -hmm. It costs forty to $50,000 a year to keep somebody in jail. And how can we say we can afford that, but we can't use that same money to provide counseling or treatment, or feed the hungry, or shelter for people who are sleeping outside on a freezing night like this. I think we really need to question our priorities and look at where we're putting those resources. Well, one trend that, that I've noticed uh, is that the local county sheriff, for instance, has uh, went to the county to request money for a, a new jail facility. And this is because this is going on all over the place on California on a statewide level because of the realignment policy that came down from Governor Brown. So now the responsibility from state-run prisons has switched over to the counties. So all the counties are in a panic and they say, we need more money, we need more jail beds, uh, when that's actually counter to what the idea of realignment was to reduce the amount of people in prison. Um, well, there is some of that happening, too. That's And that's the silver lining in this dilemma. This is true. This the, is true. The state is overwhelmed, the, the jails are packed to the gills, and the courts have said, you've got to reduce the number so of there, people in state prisons. There has been a reduction. The point yeah. that I wanted to make is that 
when the counties are, are going asking for money for new facilities now, and I saw this up in Sacramento with multiple sheriff's departments from multiple counties, their big pitch is we're going to do social services in the jail. We're going to do education programs and uh, I don't know what, anger management, mental health, <laughs> Such and such. So, so it's actually going to be this really wonderful thing. People will want to go to jail now because of all the awesome stuff that we put in the jail. Well, I don't know about that, but I do have sympathy with the sheriffs and others who are operating those facilities. I, I saw the sheriff of Los Angeles County recently, Lee Baca, making a speech on this. And he said, we run the largest mental health treatment program in the state of California. He said, that's not what we're here for, that's not our expertise, but we're the resource of last resort. Mm -hmm. We get these people because there's nowhere else for them to go. Mm -hmm. We think the state needs to do something better and smarter and more effective. And if you're hearing that from county sheriffs, then it's really time for us to pay attention. Well, it's in the, the county sheriff's best interest to, uh, to want to improve their programs. Uh, it, my is it though? I mean, is it because it's their business to lock people up, and that's how they make their bread and butter? So, I really don't have any respect for them myself, and I think that they're making money off of people's poverty. But. Well, I would differ from you in, in this respect. Mm -hmm. um, when I was much younger and on the front lines of some of the turmoil in the '60s and '70s. I, I didn't have a lot of use for police officers, and I called them names that I'm embarrassed about now. Mm -hmm. Since that time, I've gotten to know a lot of them. Mm -hmm. And there are some that I find kind of scary, but the great majority are doing that job because they want to help. They want to make a contribution. They want to do their part to make the world a better place. <laughs> and, and that's true of, of people like sheriffs as well. I know our Santa Cruz County Sheriff. He's a good man. He wants to offer mental health services in the jails because he's being forced to take those people. And he says, if they're going to be here, if there's nowhere else I can send them, at least let me offer treatment to them. there be something productive for them. Well, so well, so I understand where he's coming that, from. And, and I think that, that from the point of view of being a, a local county sheriff and, and uh, playing the whole politics of that, that makes sense. I, it, but for him... To, to be in a position where it's actually practical for him to ask for something like that, I think is a sign of the fact that people aren't getting those social services from uh, the system before they end up in jail and from parts of the system that aren't controlled by the police and by the prison system. And I think you're getting at some of the basic problems. It seems that we can always find tens of millions of dollars to to build a giant highway, or a giant new state or, or county a basketball facility, stadium. or a basketball stadium, or to do a study on desalination, not even build a desalination plant, but spend millions on studying whether or not we should. But, but if you want to talk about providing treatment to people with addiction issues or mental illness issues, helping veterans with post-traumatic stress disorder, or or terrible injuries reintegrate into society, or any of the other many unmet needs of people who don't have a lot of power or much of a voice in society, there never seems to be any money for that. I want to challenge that point of view. That's one of the main reasons that I'm running. Okay, excellent. Excellent. Uh, you know, I think that we really need to articulate alternatives to that. Uh, some of the more... Uh, for lack of a better word, conservative people in town, I think, they sort of have themselves in a bind because on one hand, they want all these problems to be solved. They want uh, uh, less intravenous needle use and less uh, violent crime. And, and yeah, But they, they don't even know if that's a, a real issue. I mean, they've made this issue up in it's, my mind. It's been, it, it's, it's been uh, turned into a political hot potato. For, yeah. Well, what for, about the uh, police pouring water on my friend who is a veteran? You know, it's like, what were they doing in that that's, instance? That's a real issue as well. Mm -hmm. you know, I mean, that's... Uh, <clears throat> that was I mean, the that, Santa that's Cruz a County, County Sheriff, so... Right. Yeah. And um, do you have any homeless friends? Do you know any homeless sure. people? Sure. I had a long conversation with a 
homeless friend this yeah. afternoon who spends a lot of his days on a bench down on Pacific yes. Avenue. You probably know who he is. Um, we had a great conversation, and uh, he said he wished he could give me a campaign donation. I told him <laughs> that I'd give him a pass. Uh, you know, so I think to, to respond to what you were saying, Colin, when you start getting into public policy issues, you find that if they were easy, they would have already been fixed. Yeah, for sure. The problems that we're dealing with are tough and they're complicated, and people don't always have the patience to, to deal with that complexity. They want simple answers. And well, the, so they the say, finish. well, let's, let's get rid of those people, let's put those people in jail. And if you say, well, that's, that's not really going to help, they don't want to hear that. Well, and to finish, the, finish, the point that I was going to make, um, I, you know, these, these anti-crime groups around town, like they want a solution to all these problems, but then they also have this belief that if you give these people services... Uh, if you, you help them out in any way, then it creates this magnet effect, and more people are going to come to town, and yeah. people are going to come here just for the services. I really think that it isn't borne out uh, in the evidence, and I think it also creates sort of a, a schizophrenic type approach to policy, where it's like, we want to uh, uh, fix all these problems. We also don't want the government spending any money on these people. And it, you can't have your cake and eat it, too, on that. I agree. It's, it's an age-old human trait when we're under stress, when...